Hey guys, Jerome Maldonado. So, you know what's been on my mind is a lot of what I talk about, and sometimes I have my team feeding me information of stuff they think I should talk about that's trending, and none of the stuff that they tell me I need to talk about I ever like. The real stuff that really has made me successful isn't that stuff. The stuff that's um, created wealth for me is the stuff I'm gonna talk to you guys about today. Um, it's about visualization. I did another video about it, and I'm gonna kinda harp on this because this really is the pivotal piece of what's um, created wealth in my life. Um, in every business I've owned, I've owned a lot of them. I've owned a lot of companies. Um, I've bought a lot of stuff. And every time that I go out and I buy something, it's because I'm looking for an easier way to create wealth. And it, it, I'm no different than you guys. I want the simplest way to create wealth that I can. And what I've learned over the years is there's no simple way to create wealth. Everything's complicated. Everything takes time. And everything's work, right? And so I've learned that by owning a lot of shit. Just owning a lot of stuff. Um, plain and simple. Um, I, I bought... When, when things were going good, I, I pump out those businesses, and then at certain points in time, um, things struggle for a little while because of economic changes, but you keep working at them, and they continue to go, and then you, I deploy money into other stuff, and I try restaurants, and, I, and I, I did beauty salons, and we did dance schools for my, for my wife. We've done a lot of stuff. You know, we've done coffee shops and juice bars and all the traditional business stuff. We've done marketing companies, network marketing companies. We've done um, just about everything you can think of, we've done. Um, so, lo and behold, what I found out of doing all that stuff, and I sit back, everything that we did was successful, everything. Um, the only reason we would ever exit anything is because one thing would make more money with less effort or the timing. So, like for example, I executed what I call the Ray Kroc business model um, when the recession hit. I had a lot of empty real estate and I was looking for businesses to deploy into my buildings to create cash flow to pay for the asset. And that's what McDonald's did. The McDonald's Corporation does not own, um, did not make its money and wealth on hamburgers. It created its wealth in real estate. And that's what most people don't know. They just found a way through the means of selling hamburgers to pay rent or leasebacks to the owners of the land being McDonald's Corporation, which is the largest real estate um, corporation in the world. They have the largest holding real estate in the world. And so I exercised that same model by putting beauty salons in my buildings and then selling the beauty salons to the beauticians that worked within our beauty salons to get cash flow from them having a lease to pay us back. Um, same thing with, uh, so I, I created them. I created them to be successful. I created, I, I went in and I, I didn't want to duplicate what I had to do in those beauty salons when I did Subway. So I went into a franchise model and I said, okay, they've already done the homework for me. I just have to implement it, bring it in. And then I, but I wanted to make sure they were successful. I wanted to make sure they were profitable. I wanted to create an infrastructure. Okay, so you hear all this. You see what I've, what I've been doing in real estate for years. My construction company, same thing. How do you go in and you open your doors in construction, right? Um, and you go to work, and in one year, you bring in $1.2 million in revenue. How do you do that your first year in business? How do you take a 13-year-old Subway store that's never done more than $5,000 a week in revenue and take it up to $9,000 a week in 60 days? How do you take a beauty salon that nobody knows, you brand it, you open up your doors, 60 days after you open it up, you're doing over $8,000 net profit a month. How do you do that? How do you go in and, um, and take coffee shops, juice bars that no one knows, you duplicate them, make them look like a franchise, and you take these things, and this was in earlier, this was like in 2001, when I was still a little wet behind the ears, but I was figuring things out, but I was making $4,000 a month in less than 60 days, net profit. Okay, so and you gotta remember, this is 20 plus years ago, right? And so, or 20, about 20 years ago. And so you, you sit back and I, you say, okay, how do you make every single company that you've done, you've ever opened, you've ever facilitated business in, successful? And how, Jerome, do you continue to buy real estate? Do, you don't worry about the market. You don't worry if we're in the height of a market, the low of the market, and you succeed at every piece of real estate that you've ever purchased because we've never failed at any piece of real estate that we've ever purchased. Now there's, there's what I call my demon childs of piece of real estate that I hated because they took so much of my time um, for, the, for the amount of money I got back. It wasn't worth my time, but we never lost. And so when you can execute a real business plan on anything you do, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you create wealth. 
And so I sit here with a calculator in my hand and I typically do these numbers beforehand. Um, but I, I, I'm gonna do them with you guys in actual reality because it's important for you guys to understand how my brain thinks. When I sit down and I'm, and I'm breaking down a deal, um, I sit down just like this with a, with a piece of paper, a calculator, and a pen. And I have to visualize things. So when people say, okay, Drew, how did you start buying land, building houses? Well, I had a business plan. And it wasn't, it wasn't like this college drafted, executed, 20 page essay business plan, or I didn't get this pre-developed paper from the bank where they said, fill this out, we need to know your business plan and write an essay about it. I got one piece of paper and I broke down numbers. And I visualized the numbers because when I can see the numbers, I know what my action steps need to be to execute. And so many people go through life and business trying to execute things with their blinders on. And, and I don't know how people do it. I don't know how you guys do it that are watching this that are doing that. I don't know how you guys go in and say, I'm gonna open up a business and you, I, 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 I believe that most people function on hope, and I, I was grateful enough to have a, a mentor years ago, and he said, Jerome, if you spit in one hand and you hope in the other, you're gonna have an empty hand, you're gonna have a handful of spit and an empty hand of hope, meaning both are friggin' worthless. You can't do anything with either one of them. So instead of hoping, execute. Because all in life that matters is results. But how do you get those results? So people will hear me harp and talk about, okay, how do you do something? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna explain to you guys how you visualize and create a roadmap. And I'm gonna use just a simple theoretical example. So it doesn't matter if you're in real estate, it doesn't matter if you're an attorney, it doesn't matter if you're opening up, you're a physician and you're opening up your new uh, medical practice. You need to know how many patients need to walk through that door and how you're gonna execute their insurance payments to be able to afford the building you're in, to be able to uh, afford a lifestyle, what your profitability is gonna be. It doesn't matter what industry that you're doing business in, real estate. It doesn't matter if you're doing business um, in, you're a mechanic or a plumber or anything. What is your business model that you can visualize to do and execute in order to do this, okay? So, simple theoretical example. I open up a construction company and I say, okay, look, I need to be able to generate and make $250,000 a year just to make it worth my time. And that, that, would be my, that would be my recommendation to anybody because if you're gonna go to work and be self-employed and you're not making a quarter million dollars a year, go get a job. It's much easier to go make 150, 200 grand a year working for somebody than going out and opening up a business and having the risk, the liabilities to go and make $100,000 a year. It's much simpler to go work for somebody and then you get off at five, you finish, you dust your hands off, and then you go out and moonlight and whatever you're doing because you can go out and get a guaranteed paycheck. But for those of you guys who are ambitiously driving at something bigger and you guys wanna create a business, this is how you do it. But you gotta create a roadmap, a visualization of how you're going to execute that business. So when we went in and we started doing beauty salons, I went and interviewed I went into beauty salons of different classes, like from Great Clips and, um, and what's Supercuts? Supercuts, Great Clips, the ones that were the more cost-effective, lower end, what you would consider the lower end um, beauty salons and uh, hair cutteries. And then I went into the elite ones, the, uh, the coutures, the, uh, the, the, the nice high-end beauty salons. Okay, and then I went into some of them that are all in between. And I said, okay, we need to find our business model. We need to find where we're at. Now, and then I'd ask them, how, and I would just ask the customers. You'd be surprised what people will tell you if you just ask them. Years ago, my mentor told me, I said, Jerome, if you wanna find something out, you know how do you find it out? You ask people. And people, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys realize how willing people are to throw up all over you and give you information, you would ask questions for everything. And so one thing that I've gotten good at is asking questions. So when we were doing beauty salons, I would ask them, how much do you guys charge? How many colors do you guys do out of here every day, do you think? How many perms? How many, um, how many, um, how many uh, highlights? How much full um, color do you guys do out of here? And that's how I, I got my numbers. And then I dissected them and I said, okay, this is how many asses I need to put in the chairs every single day and this is how many we have to sell. And I'd explain that to my staff. And I'd say, this is our goal. And I'd always up it because you never 
average people never hit their goals. So I up them and say, these are our goals. And if we fell just a little short, I still hit my numbers, still hit my numbers, but I could visualize it. And so ladies and gentlemen, in real estate, in business, it's the exact same thing. So I sit back and I, I, I start executing a business plan. My first business plan when I bought land and I built my first house, people sit back and I, I just did a podcast and the gentleman that I was on there with a podcast, he said, Jerome, I built one spec home and that one spec home, I lost my ass. And he goes, that was 15 years ago and I still haven't mustered up the courage to do it again. And I, I told him, I said, why do, you think you, why do you feel that you would fail again doing something that's so profitable? And he goes, you know, I don't know, I just overspent. And I go, what was your asset class? And I started asking him questions. And the problem was he didn't reverse engineer his build before he actually executed. And so the problem is he couldn't visualize where he was going. He just thought that if he bought land and built a house, he was gonna make a profit. Didn't matter how much he spent on contracting it out. Didn't matter if there was a business plan on how to contract it out. And ladies and gentlemen, you can go out, hire a general contractor, pay the most expensive general contractor to build you the most beautiful home you can buy. You can, but then he's taking the profitability, not you. And so there's trade labor and there's ways to do things. There's a way to build homes and there's a way to do things correctly where you make the profit. The biggest thing is you need to know what you can spend. So the first thing we did is we sit down, I did a spreadsheet, okay? And I included everything. And in my inner circle, and the people who work with us directly, they have this Excel spreadsheet, okay? This is gold, all this stuff is gold because the thing is, is we, I built this stuff from scratch years ago. And my dad and I sat down, we built an Excel spreadsheet. And on that Excel spreadsheet, it goes through a list of everything you need to do to build a house, everything. From closing costs, commissions, buying the land, all the, all the acquisitional stuff, subcontractors fees, electricians, roofers, drywall, painters, cabinets, light fixtures, you name it. And all this is how much each thing costed, okay? Now, how do we get these numbers? We get bids. First, I get a design, okay? And I do some theoretical research, and I get people to bid projects that don't even exist. And then I put all this stuff in here on writing on what it is. And at the end, it adds it all up, and it gives you a number, okay? This is your build cost. Now, I go into that area, and I, I go do research, and I say, okay, what are things selling for? So if you guys watch my post, you guys see land that I'm buying over in California. You see land that I'm buying over in um, Seattle area. You see projects that we're doing over in the Phoenix area. You see stuff that we're doing down in Puerto Rico. You see stuff that I have going on right here at home. And you sit back and go, how does he know that shit, all those projects are profitable? Because ladies and gentlemen, I do this exact same thing. I do a spreadsheet, you know, that I, that I go back in and I know exactly what my costs are to build that product. I know my price per square foot. Now, the other day, our architect on one of our projects came back in and they had this class A, beautiful architecture elevation plan um, for a product. And I said, it, it's too much. We're gonna go broke building that. And I knew that because that they didn't fit the asset class that I was building. Someone in my inner circle came in and they said, hey, it's gonna cost me $200 a square foot to build this product. And it was a rectangular duplex. And I sat back and said, it's gonna cost you $200 a square foot to build that piece of shit. And it was because it's not a piece of shit, but it was just a simple build. And I'm like, when I think $200 a square foot, I'm thinking nice, elegant, nice home. I mean, you're not building this house that we live in, but you're gonna build a nice home. You know, for $200 a square foot, you're gonna build nice, a nice home. So when you're building modest homes, you, you want to understand that you shouldn't be paying $200 a square foot. You should be paying someplace closer to about a hundred and a quarter a square foot for a simple, basic, modest build out if you're running and managing the product right. You know, maybe 150, depending on where you're at, but no more than that. So how do you get there? How do you, how do you hire people to get there? Well, you have to reverse engineer this. And if your number at the end comes out too high, you need to figure out on each of these individual lines how to cut costs and not cut costs where you get an inferior product, but you have to cut costs where you go in and you can get the same product at the same price and maybe you're hiring different trade labor. You know, maybe you're not hiring the company that has the $2.1 million building that they have to afford and work out of 
to do your drywall or your painting. Maybe you have a guy that works out of his house doing painting, but he's a good quality contractor. He doesn't have a lot of overhead. His prices are more reasonable and it's gonna save you $2,000 on that one product. Maybe you do the same thing with your concrete finishers. Maybe you do the exact same thing with your framers. You don't go in, you don't go after the guys that sit back on the hard corner of the interstate in these million dollar buildings. You go back in and the guys that are smaller, that have more of a modest overhead, those are the guys that you exercise to help you facilitate your budget, okay? And then you manage them. And there's a lot of good ones out there. How do I know? Because we've done it all over the country. Now, you sit back and you go, okay, I can visualize this and how much it's gonna cost me now. And I'm not gonna supersede my expenditure list that I have here. I do build in at least a 5% contingency cost, okay? Just in case stuff happens, because life happens, and you will have unforeseen circumstances. Then you take the average price per home over there. Let's say it's 600K, $600,000, okay? Now, you subtract out this number, okay? Whatever that number is, okay? Now, let's say that number, let's say you're building a 26, let's say you're building a 2,300 square foot house, and let's say that house is gonna cost you about $135 a square foot times 2300 That's $310,000, okay? It's going to cost you 310k to build that house, okay? Now, let's say that the land cost you $50,000. This is very similar to what we're doing up in California right now. Okay? So, 50,000 this is land Build cost, then we have, let's say that we have another, build, we have commissions, we're gonna have commissions, we're gonna have closing fees, we're gonna have all this stuff. Now follow me here, this is the stuff that gets boring. This is where you guys stop the video, this is where you, you fail. Because the boring stuff is what makes you money. You guys all want entertainment, you guys want firecrackers, and you guys want all this stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the firecrackers. This is what makes you money, ladies and gentlemen. Don't start going and getting bored when you sit here in front of a calculator. This is the stuff right here that makes you money. This is why most people fail, because they don't pay attention to this part right here, because it's boring. But the boring stuff is what affords you to do the fun stuff. And so ladies and gentlemen, don't get bored and stop the video in this part. How stupid are you to stop it in this part? You know, when you started this video, is because you're an intelligent investor, and I knew that. And the first thing I knew by, by you getting this far in the video is that you're intelligent. And intelligence will allow you to see and unfold what we're doing financially, mentally, what's in my brain. It's boring on paper. I know it's boring on paper, but ladies and gentlemen, as boring as it is, this is what affords wealth. This is what affords a lifestyle, right here, this stuff. And so ladies and gentlemen, you wanna learn how to generate wealth, how to get wealthy, this is how I did it, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is how I got wealthy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you go back in, you sit back and you go, okay, I got costs. I got 600K, okay, now times 6% commissions. Okay, that's $36,000. Now, you sit back and you got closing costs, you're probably gonna have another 1% closing costs, you have another 6,000, let's call it $7,500 in closing costs, okay? Now you got about another $43,000, okay? So you got about $43,000 in commissions and closing. Okay. Now, we're going to take six hundred dollars We're going to subtract out $310,000 minus $50,000 minus $43,000. It's $197,000 in profit, okay? Now, we got one thing in there. We got, we, got, um, we got some taxes to pay. And not just, these aren't income taxes, like excise taxes, gross receipt taxes. Okay, now look, I want to explain this part to you guys. This is where people forget. Now, we don't pay taxes on that land, okay? We don't pay taxes on this amount of money right here. Okay, so we're not gonna pay our excise tax on that, but we are gonna pay excise tax. We're gonna pay taxes on this, we're gonna pay taxes on this. So we have 310,000. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA. Every single state is slightly different. So if this doesn't exactly match the state that you're in and how gross receipt taxes, excise tax, um, 
how, how it fits your state, just understand that there is expense there, right? Every, there's gonna be a tax on this product of some type of sales tax to some magnitude somewhere along the line. So just understand that you need to account for that. So I'm gonna explain this in one state scenario. And so if it doesn't fit your state, you'll understand it. That just understand there's expense to it. And so if I take $310,000 plus $43,000, and then I'm gonna take a simple like 6%, okay? That's another $21,000 in taxes, okay? So we're gonna subtract out, let's just call it $25,000. Okay, this is gonna be your net out, your gross net. So 197 minus 25,000 is gonna be $172,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this is about what we'll make on our California homes, okay? Give or take, give or take. It might be slightly less than that, but it's gonna be about that someplace. It might be slightly more than that, but it's gonna be about right here, okay? Now, I know if I'm gonna make that on one build, okay? So I sit back, and this is what um, Dave and I did when we sat down and we did this. I say, okay, 172. We bought three lots. We're gonna build all three of them out at the same time. So 172 times three, that's $516,000 in profit. It's gonna take us longer to get permits than it is to build the houses. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll just buy another three lots. I said, why don't we just do this twice? Let's do six of them. And so if we do that times two, we could build out six of these in one year. These are just little tiny side projects on top of everything else that we have going on. And ladies and gentlemen, how would you guys like to have a side project that brought you in a net income of $1,032,000 every year? Just on a little side project, a million bucks. So you guys want to understand how to become a millionaire. Ladies and gentlemen, multiply that times six. And you become a millionaire right there. One product, one business model. Now, I make it look simple, like, okay, where do you get the money for this stuff, right? Well, I'll tell you that we have a business plan. We go in, I bought the lots cash um, because I can now, right? But in the beginning, I had to take a mortgage out of my house. I had to take a home equity line of credit out of my house to go in and start this process because money sitting in a bank is worthless. Ladies and gentlemen, money has to be working. Money has to be moving. It has to be fluid. You know, that's why they call it currency, right? What's a current? A current is water. It's moving water, right? A current is moving water. Well, currency is moving capital. So when, when, they, when they call money currency, it's because that money has to continue moving. That money has to move in order to be able to start producing income for you. So so ladies and gentlemen, if you're not putting your money to work like this to produce this, you can't do it. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want to become a millionaire, what was that? One, one million, call it $30,000. So one million, 30,000. One year. One year, one project, okay? Now, the goal isn't to sit here and dump this. This isn't our business model. So our business model is to get this. How do, we, how do I take this and instead of paying the state of California 50 plus percent of this in taxes, how do I take that and I make it work for me where I pay zero in taxes? I go out with this and so you say, okay, I'm gonna do an asset that I can buy 75% debt to income ratio, okay? So I sit back and I go, okay, I'm gonna go buy me a $4 million project. So then we start shopping for $4 million assets because I'm gonna take this money and I'm gonna go invest 1 million of this into a down payment. I'm not gonna go and buy a Mercedes. I'm not gonna take this and buy a Mercedes Benz. I'm not gonna take this and go buy me a million dollar home or a $2 million home or a $3 million home. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna buy me a $4 million asset. Asset, $4 million asset. And I'm gonna take this million dollars, I'm gonna put a down payment on a $4 million asset that produces cash for me every single month, whether I work for the rest of my life. Every month, cash flow comes in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a $4 million asset, okay, four million. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna write off 80% of that in its first year, okay? Now, I don't even need that big of a write-off yet, but if I take that, I have the ability to take an 80% write-off on $4 million and depreciate the hell out of that thing the first year. Ladies and gentlemen, I do that. 
Guess how much I'm paying in taxes on this money right here? Zero. And I just bought a $4 million asset with that, no taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Democrats, Republicans, and the wealthy exercise. It doesn't matter who you are. The biggest real estate holding the most wealth, whether you're Democrat, Republican, is in real estate, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody owns it. It's the biggest asset protection, financial protection, tax shelter that you can have and own. And if you go out and you exercise this stuff with an accountant or CPA, which I'm not, and I don't claim to be, you can go out and deploy this into something like this and pay zero in taxes on this. And ladies and gentlemen, that is wealth. That is financial literacy. And that's how you build a visualization of how you go from this, of how you go from nothing, to this, to this, to this. And you 6X that one year, and you make this. Then you go from this to this, ladies and gentlemen. And you just turned a modest investment into a $4 million asset. Then just go do that the next year, 8 million. And then the next year, 12 million. And then the next year, 16 million. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanna get wealthy, you gotta be able to visualize where that money comes from. There's no shortage of money out there. There's only shortage of creativity and the lack of your ability to go out and put together a business plan that you can visualize.